Hello there viewers and welcome to this program, Everything Catholic. Thank you for always being with us. We are still discussing the second category of the seven sacrament, talking about the sacraments of healing. Previously, we concluded with you the sacrament of penance, you know, discussing from with the latest perspective. And uh, of course, we had with us two personalities sharing with us on that sacrament. Today, we are taking on the sacrament of anointing of the sick. I remain yours always, Reverend Father Boniface Nebo, and as with. I am Father Silvanus Ame. Thank you for joining us on this program this week. We are glad to have with us today a member of the Congregation for the Missions, that is the Vicentian Priest, and he is by name Reverend Father Peter Atta, the former Vice Rector of St. Simon and Jude Minor Seminary, Kujie Abuja, and currently the Chaplain of St. Vincent's Hospital, Kubwa. Father Atta, we are glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show, Father Peter. I think uh, talking about the sacraments, you are just perfectly fitting to share with us from your world of experience working as a chaplain in the hospital. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you. So let us begin on a note of seeking to understand what we are about to discuss. Father, what is the sacrament all about? Anointing of the sick. Anointing of the sick is a Catholic sacrament administered to Catholics who having reached the age of reason begins to be a danger due to sickness or old age. So these are the people do for the reception of the sacrament. This is what the sacrament is all about. Okay. It's all about the sick persons. Okay. okay. You are administered to death. <coughs> okay, Father. Yeah. Now when when you, you know from this definition you have given, you know, we heard you say the sick and old age. And we've been talking about sickness. Um, can we have a better understanding of qualification? You know, the intensity of the sickness, or maybe can someone just have a headache and we begin to administer that sacrament to the person. Or there is a danger of death which warrants the administration of the sacrament or call for it. It's both ways. Okay. Uh, it depends on the person's faith. Good. And disposition. And disposition. Good. Very important. Okay. So some people, even headache, <laughs> for them it's enough to go for anointing of the sick. Okay. Can they believe that as soon as they receive that sacrament, that sacrament is from there. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. They don't need much of a um, Yes. Just a very, very short one. When you were talking, you made reference to, you know, when you are defining it and you see for Catholics. Catholics. So, meaning non Catholics cannot be beneficiaries of the sacrament. Is that what you mean? They can. If they ask for it and, mm -hmm. and they they actually for dispose it. for and it. Dispose. So asking for it and, and personal disposition, disposition is yes. also key. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's That's for non -Catholics. Catholics. Yes, for non Catholics. Mm -hmm. Based on my experience over there in the hospital, I've encountered people who okay. ask for it. Okay. And to my greatest surprise, something happened last year, precisely eleventh of February. You know, every February level is war day for the sick. Word for the sick. Yes, yes, yes. So what I do since I started work there, on that day after the normal usual morning mass for the staff to begin the work, then at twelve no, I still do have mass for the sick persons. Mass for them because in the morning you can't get them down. So we brought them down, and a particular woman, not even a Catholic, was brought down to the chapel for the mass, on which year unable to talk, unable to sit well, we support your brother. Mm. Mm. And during the anointing, of, of course, I, I anointed, I, I, I administered mass for the sick. Uh, yeah, yeah, during the, the mass, the mass yes. I administered mm. the sacrament today. Mm. But yeah. I told them the application of it okay. for those who are willing to, even though you are not a Catholic. But after that, she opted that she just was struggling to demand for it. Mm. Mm. And also her son, a grown-up person, he said, please, Father, come and uh, anoint my mother as well. Mm -hmm. So after the anointing, the following day, just in the morning, the woman picked up mm -hmm. and started singing praises, mm -hmm. giving thanks to God that she doesn't know that she... Because of the healing effect. Yes. yes. And she said, then I've been to all hospitals. Someone advised me to come here. Mm -hmm. And I came here. 
You know, they have been treating me, yes. My condition is still on the same. Don't you prove that? But after that yesterday ritual, it's not to receive. Great. I'm okay now. Beautiful. I should start listening to praises. Praises to God. I have a few videos. <laughs> so, so, uh, that's, so, that's, that's they were happy and for her. Bam, she left her feeling at that point. So, mm. Mm. Now, um, this sacrament, must the recipients ask for it? Or can someone ask it for them? On, be, on their behalf. Or um, can the minister presume their need for it and administer it? Yes, someone can ask for it. You know, at times sickness makes one to be unconscious. Yes, critical. Yes. Critical. And then uh, when you meet with such persons, those who know the value of the sacrament, I will see Father, please. If you, Father, please come and anoint my sick brother. Father, mm. anybody? Yes. Relation. Anybody? Relation. So at that point, you have to do that. But at times, so, so you know, many people they see it as something that if you are not person, we're going to lie. We're going to die. That's mm. option. <laughs> That's anointing. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought we have to let them, okay, can we do this? I can administer this to you. And the priest try to well, you have to explain to them. Good. I have to yes, that cast them on that. And you see the will you know, you see the appreciating the sacrament, say, please do it for us. Good. So with that explanation, you change the mentality of such persons. Mm. So from your response, a priest cannot presume. The need for someone to administer the sacrament, it has to be requested, asked for, or accepted. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, it has to be accepted by the person. Okay. okay. So I may tell you, we don't need it because of the fear, because of the implication yes. for their own understanding yes. of the sacraments. Okay. Now, Father, on this concept, on this other name of the sacrament called extreme uh, auction. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I had an experience not quite long. I had, a, I have a very old woman parishioner. My yeah. parish was sick. Very consistent at masses. So I noticed her absence. Then at the band, of course, I'm near my place of work. So when I asked, I requested that I be taken to the house. Okay. I was told she was sick. Mm. I went with the oil. Yeah. Of course, discussed with her. She said she was ready and disposed. You understand. But she stays with her in-law and the wife. Then no longer Kali. They attend another church. And... After the whole ritual and that we did, she shared an experience and was saying that they were asking her why do I have to anoint her and all of that, that she was not going to die now. So for mm -hmm. such people, the understanding yeah. is it is the people who are about to die that mm -hmm. receive anointing of the sick. Yeah. Can you cut kinds and even some of our cardics, they yes. are not understanding. You may deepen some our uh, understanding of that and teach better. Maybe from that name, extreme yeah, auction. So they always have that feeling that if somebody is about to die. Right? Yes, because they are dust. Final anointing. Final anointing. That's the anointing of the person going to die. That's right. Preparing them for the anointing of the person going to die. Once you are not the person, you know more need. But it's not that. Yes, this the the should be seen. That's in those days. Of course, the sacrament was not an extreme of sleep, but not anointing of the sick yeah. because of the effects of the sacraments. Yeah. Because of the effect, because it provides both yes. physical and spiritual healing, healing. yeah, okay. and also it brings about comfort to the person, peace of mind, mm. comfort, very good, very good. It strengthens the person, what I mean, the sick persons mm. to unite his or her suffering. To that that of Christ. Christ. Perfect. So we're going to hang in there as we proceed on a very short break. Father has already started telling us about the effect of the sacrament of anointing of the sick. Do not go anywhere. Remain with us. Everything Catholic, a program that discusses anything and everything about the Catholic Church. Faith, doctrines, morals, canon law, church governance, papal documents, you name it. As long as it is Catholic, it shall be discussed. Join Father Amen Sivanus and Father Nebo Boniface, two priests passionate about teaching the true faith of the Catholic Church, as they host bishops, priests, religious, and distinguished laymen and women to discuss and simplify the wealth of the Church's teachings. Everything Catholic, showing on Catholic television, CTV. Everything Catholic, teaching the faith.
The glory of God is a transformation. Okay, thank you for being there, and this is still the program Everything Catholic. Before we went on break, Father had already it has already started talking about the effect of the sacrament of anointing of the sick on the recipient. Now we'll continue by requesting our Father to make us understand better who is the proper minister of the sacrament of anointing of the sick. Bishop and priest. And if there are exceptions as well for the administrations, beyond the bishop and the priest, can anybody else administer? Okay, Father, well, thank you very much for that uh, beautiful response. Now, we we'll have to know, again, by asking, is this sacrament repeatable? Can it be repeated on an individual? Yes, it's repeatable. Okay. Uh, you know, most of when the sick, especially some serious pain, most of them, you know, when the pain is very excruciating, they ask for the sacrament, you know, it gives peace. It strengthens them and courage, and it brings this relief on the sick patients. Mm -hmm. and, at the, and, 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 and at that time, the person was feel happy Good. and uniting himself with that of Christ, and that's okay. Because when late Bishop of Katsunala Diocese was yeah. in our facility, he died there okay. only for about three months. So whenever he was in pain, he do ask for the sacrament. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he administered the sacrament for him, you see he was taking a very big drift, say, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I cannot rest. He would always say that, I cannot rest. I say, thank you for coming. He cannot go. Now you see him, what? Remain calm. Remain calm. So I really learned a lot from him and the effect of that of this sacrament. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So, so you, you have talked about comfort, about healing, okay. and about strength okay. as some of the effects of the sacrament of anointing of the sick. Can there be more benefits of this sacrament you would like to share with our viewers? Uh, you know, no, these are the key benefits, you know, comforts, okay. okay. peace of mind, mm. strength, and most of physical healing. healing. You know, not, let's not just talk <coughs> about the spiritual healing of, of all the aspects of it, mm -hmm. but the physical healing, because every sick person wish to be healed. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be strong physically. Exactly. So for those who believe and have faith, you know, it's all about faith. Yes. When you believe and have faith in the sacrament, and through the sacrament, I will meet my healing. Of course, it works for the many of them, mm. like in the case of that woman. And so many of us that have, what I mean, that have administered the sacraments, after receiving the sacraments, within the last one year, I worked there. You see them telling me, yes, Father, thank you very much. After receiving the sacraments, I'm now okay. Mm. I can even ask the doctor to discharge and I say, no, please remain there. Mm -hmm. Follow the instruction of the doctors. Yeah. And make sure you finish your medication, medication. before you go. No. Very good. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't take anything for granted. So people are opt, what I mean, opt to go, opt to go after mm -hmm. receiving the sacraments mm -hmm. because they feel that wow, yeah. I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. I'll receive something special. That's why, I, I'll, in fact, from my own, on a, what I mean, uh, experience, best from, from, from from my experience, mm -hmm. I will encourage that if every hospital, like as we used to have in the US and other places, okay. you have a resident chaplain mm -hmm. that that will be always there to administer the sacraments to those who need it. Mm -hmm. Because it brings a lot of relief on them and their the relatives. Now, mm -hmm. Father, are there people who may not receive the sacrament of anointing? Is it? Yeah. Are there people are there who are restricted? Yes. From receiving? Be, be by virtue of age or anything. Uh, based on the definition, no, no, no. Based on the definition of the sacrament, those who have reached the age of reason, okay, I will know the age of reason in the Catholic Church from age seven mm -hmm. and odd age. So when you are on that, when I mean, when you attain that age, at least you you have high sense of reason. You know the difference between bad and good, and what is good for yourselves. So you can receive the sacrament. No, why is this important? for the sacrament of anointing of the sick. You said 
for someone who has reached the age of reason. Yeah. So, supposing a child who has not attained that age of reason is gravely ill. Yeah. And say the parents ask for anointing for the child. But the child, from what we have said, has not attained the age of reason. That is to say that the child may not receive the anointing. Why is this very necessary that the recipient should have attained the age of reason? And necessarily because you should know what you are receiving. Okay. And, and, believe, in and believe in it. It's all about okay. faith. Exactly. At that point, we believe that you have faith. You know what faith is all about. From your catechism class and all the rest okay. of them, you receive baptism. So you know that, yes, this thing is good for me. If I take it, I'll be all right. And that is what I'm looking for. To be all right, to be okay, to be healed. But in the case of a little baby, mm -hmm. a little child, you know, you can also administer the sacrament based on the faith of the parents who ask for it. We know that, yes, we believe that this sacrament will bring healing to our child. We've administered. So Please, come and administer the sacrament. On the faith of the parents, Yes, the sacrament of anointing of this can be administered on a child below the age of reason? Sure. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, that's a very interesting one. Now, Father, my question will really have to bother on <laughs> this sacrament and those who have died. Yeah, mm. can this sacrament be administered on one who has died? And what at what time between the person's being alive and departure into the world beyond that is dying? Mm. I asked this question because I once had an opportunity of accompanying a brother who got a call. I came to visit him, then he suddenly got a call that he should rush down to anoint one who was sick. Mm -hmm. And they, we hit the road, but before we got down, he passed on. And he proceeded to anoint. Yeah. But <laughs> there were some persons early comments there. This was just about maybe three minutes later and after he passed on and mm -hmm. the doctor confirmed him dead. Mm -hmm. But he had maybe started the sacrament still on. And somebody made the comments. I heard, he didn't even know I heard, mm -hmm. I didn't even discuss with him. And of what use is this? So, can this sacrament be administered on the dead? Just as you say, I had in a time frame. Yes, just as you said, I had such experience. Just okay. about last two months, okay. December precisely. Okay. I was not in the hospital yet. I was coming from outside, someone from Arab Road to the hospital. Mm. So I was called upon. Please, yeah, of course, a mother of a priest, mm. Mr. Sokoto Diocese. Mm. Yes. Uh, okay, Father. I forgot the name. Yeah. Um, uh, mm -hmm. So, when I was called upon to come for and uh, administer the sacraments on Richie Day, she the traffic too. A traffic and all the rest of the mm -hmm. but I'm, <laughs> thanks be to God, I'm not resident there. So, on Richie Day, she passed on. Mm -hmm. But I was, wow, with all this, my efforts, risking my life to drive that way recklessly mm -hmm. in order to beat up, yes, she could ask him, no, how to proceed with that naughty. Mm -hmm. But you know, but at the end of that, there is something that is very important after a multi sort person because what is that in apostolic pardon? Mm. It's then the ritual. So it's all about praying for the person who just departed. Exactly. The apostolic pardon. So you just have to say the apostolic pardon prayer. Exactly. And that's exactly what it is. So with that, it, you have covered every aspect. <laughs> Indeed, alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. And as long as we live, particularly, on this sacrament of anointing of the sick, we are all encouraged to always embrace them, principally because of the fruit and the effect they have on us. Comfort, healing, support, and of course, helping us to align our pain and suffering to that of Christ. Yes. It's been a, a very wonderful time here with Reverend Father Peter Atta, the current chaplain to St. Vincent Hospital, Kubwa, Abuja. Father, thank you sincerely for being with us Thank and for you. contributing to knowledge of the faith using this medium. Continue to be with us in this program, Everything Catholic. As we sign out, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for your questions and comments and suggestions or recommendations. Reach us through the lines you see running on your screen. God bless you. I remain Reverend Father Boniface, label. But let me say something. You can reach us through our Facebook account. You can like our page, Omnia Catholica. Follow us on Twitter, same handle, Omnia Catholica. Please do not forget to share this video to educate someone. I would also like to ask that you please help us sustain this program, keep it on air, by offering sponsorship to this program. You can reach us through the contacts 
on your screen right now. Thank you for being part of this program this week. Until we come here again next week, stay blessed.